pastor until uh, basically the last minute. They were just about ready to, to call pastors. And, um, and uh, Reverend, Reverend Otis Lee told me, he said, uh, I want you to call this person who was Deacon Celestine and said, uh, and I know him well and, uh, and, and I can get him to give you an appointment. And, uh, and reluctantly, I, I said, uh, I first told him no, because the truth of the matter is, I envision pastoring in the area, but, 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 uh, but my choice was Mobile. I, I thought I would probably end up in Mobile, and, um, but, uh, but, but Uncle Otis and, uh, and Deacon Celestine, after he talked to me, convinced me that, uh, that I ought to come by. We came by one Sunday, and um, another fellow was preaching, and, uh, and the fellow, he actually act like he already was pastoring the church. And so I, I said, well, um, this is going to be just a waste of time. But I sat there, and, uh, and after he had finished, then he said, well, uh, um, we're going to let uh, this pastor, uh, Bill Miller, uh, from, from, from over in Flomit, we're going to let him say something. So he could go all this way, and we're going to let him say something. So, but I said, y'all know, know how we do, First Baptist. And uh, that's exactly how he said it. Y'all know how we do, First Baptist. And, I got up and said something, and uh, just shortly, and and sat back down, and uh, and Pastor Woods was sitting right next to me, Reverend Woods, who was a member of this church for years and years and years, and <laughs> when I got here, and uh, and he turned out to be one of my very good friends, and, and I, I learned so much from him, and he says, and I leaned over and I says, uh, does this man already pass in the church? And he says, uh, he says no, and he says. Uh, and he leaned back over and said, Miller. I said, I said, what? He says, uh, he's not going to get that church. Uh, I says, uh, I say, he's not? He said, uh, he said, no. He said, you know who's going to get that church? He said, you are. And Reverend Woods didn't know me, but he, he had that premonition. He said, you're going to get it. And I said, well, okay. I said, but I, I said, act like a pastor. And, he, and Reverend Woods said, told me this. He said, he said, Miller, a hen can sit on eggs 21 days and hatch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the way that's the way I got here, and uh, and and they had already heard all the preachers they were going to hear, but they did decide to to, uh, to listen to us, and uh, they invited us back uh, on the next second Sunday, and and when uh, we preached, and I and I didn't sing that day because I was host, so they, nobody can say that I got to church because I could sing, but I I preach from the. Um, a 14th chapter of, of St. John, and my subject was God is concerned about His people, and I, I, I preached love to the people, and that um, and Deacon Jordan told me that they was going to call that that uh, that that Wednesday or Thursday night, I'm not sure which, and um, and, uh, and and that was that was it, that was it, and they they, they ended up calling me, and uh, Deacon Jordan told me that I was the 55th preacher uh, to. Uh, to preach here, and that's not counting the preachers that was already members of the church that was that was carrying on for for a couple of years. So it was, it was open for a couple of years. But um, best decision that I that I ever made in my life, and I hope that um, um, that First Baptist don't regret the decision that they made, uh, because I, at the same time, as I said, I was quoting other churches, and um, and and. Uh, but, but, but afterwards, I, I was just led here. My heart was led here. But the hardest thing that I ever done was leaving the church where God had already placed me. And that was Fannie Baptist Church up in Flomington, Alabama. And the, and the reason, uh, my reason, I don't know what God's reason was, was that uh, I could not talk the church into going full time. And, uh, and I had no desire of preaching two Sundays and at one church and two Sundays at another church. It works for some people, but that wouldn't work for me because I, I don't know how you can separate yourself um, uh, that, that way. So, uh, so we ended up here, and uh, and and uh, and look at it now, almost 40 years later, we're we're still here, a little older, and I hope a little wiser, but we're still here. I'm James Miller, Jr. I am the oldest of the Miller children. I am a, a co-chairman of the deacon board here at First Baptist Church. I've been at this church going on 40 years now. Uh, I guess my most memorable moment here at First Baptist with Pastor Miller would be when we came over. 
Uh, he was doing his uh, trial sermon to be pastor here at First Baptist Church. And um, on the ride back home, he looked back in the rearview mirror. He said, well, what do you kids think? You know, how, how did I do? And uh, I spoke up quick. I said, I said uh, uh, you got it. He's like, oh, you think so, son? I said, I said, oh, yeah, if they know what preaching is like. Turns out First Baptist did know what preaching was like. And uh, 40 years later, he's still here. Happy <laughs> anniversary to uh, mom and dad and wishing you many more. Love you. Good morning, I'm Minister Darren Miller. I'm the number two son of Pastor and First Lady Miller. Um, I'm the youth minister here at First Baptist. And my most memorable moments here with Dad are to be the times when, well, when I first started out in my ministry, our knowledge that he imparted unto us. You know, the things that he told me have stuck with me down through the years and I try to base my ministry upon uh, the words that, uh, the wisdom that he's given us. Mom, Dad, wish you the best um, in your anniversary and wish you 40 more years here at First Baptist. Love you. Good morning. I'm Deacon Otis Miller, third born for James and Mary. Y'all should know them as the pastor and first lady. And one of my most memorable moments is 40 years ago is when we first got here. I was 14 years old and wasn't happy to be here. But the church really took us in and took hold to the Miller kids and treated us as their own. Uh, dad was very strict still is. Mom was very loving. She still is. And you can't have one without the other. Congratulations on 40 years here at First Baptist. I know it hasn't been easy. And we pray for however many more years that the good Lord deems fit to allow you to lead us. Nicole Johnson. I am number five of Pastor Miller's children. Um, I am his only daughter. My most memorable moment is when I lost my daughter, Nikhil, and I had to go to my father, not just as my pastor, but as my father as well. And I guess during my meltdown that he had to comfort me, love me, and be there for me, and also let me know that God makes no mistakes that everything is done for a reason. Even though through my tears and my pain, um, I know that my father and my mother was always there. So that is my memorable moment and happy 40th anniversary. We love you. Hi, I'm Derek Miller. I am the youngest out of the Miller clan, the number six. My most memorable thing about my mom and dad is that they're still here, they're still loving us, and they're still taking care of the family. And all I want to say is happy 40th anniversary, mama and daddy, love you, and y'all have a blessed day. I'm Ronnie, and uh, I guess I'm here to speak about my dad. I want to say congratulations on your 40th year anniversary here at First Baptist. And I'm number four, the handsome one. And uh, I'm the one that looks like my dad, so to say, and act like him and whatever. But I love my dad. My dad is who he is. and. Uh, and I just want to say I thank God for him. And uh, he's taught us a lot. No matter which way we went, we knew better. And I was the one that was, like I said, more like him, but I was the one that defied him too. And, 
but he's always been my dad and he's always been right there for me and he is my best friend. And dad, I just wanna say I love you and may God bless you and keep you. And I really do appreciate everything that you have done for me over the years and even to this day. And then mama, mama, love you. <laughs> and you know what? My mom, that's, 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 she just, my mom. I, it's hard to even explain my mom. And it's very hard to say something about my dad without mentioning my mom, because my mom is his backbone. And uh, mom is strong. And mom, you know you're strong, and words just can't say how much I truly love you. And, uh, and just like dad, you've always been there. But you was the one that didn't hear a lot of things. You heard it, but you didn't hear it. You didn't let us worry you. And, uh, and you acted like you didn't care what I know deep down in your heart you did. And, uh, and you put all that worration on dad because, you know, you just tune us out and you go on. But at the end of the day, you love us and this and that. And mom, you've always been a hard worker and you're a beautiful, loving woman, even to these to the uh, members here at First Baptist. You, you're a mom to everybody, not just us. And uh, sometimes I really don't like these folks because they've taken you away from us, but you know, God gave you to me and then he gave you, you to First Baptist. And I appreciate First Baptist. First Baptist, I truly love you. I love what you do for my dad, even though we don't get to talk to him much because of you guys. And because his phone's always ringing, so, but. And a lot of times I walk in the house, try to talk to my dad and mom, and he's in there on the phone. And I just turn around and walk back out because I know you guys are his heart. You're their heart. And they love you. And if my parents love you, guess what? I have to love you also. So God bless you. Keep you, mama. And uh, I truly love you. not going to do it well. These are things I tried to instill into my children, whether I got it or not, but they're still living. And, uh, and, and, and they're gaining, gaining better every day. And, uh, and I pray for my children because of the thing that I put on my children, the challenges that, that they, they, they watch me. And, and, and one of them told me, he says, Daddy said, the hardest thing in the world, and I, and I share this with people uh, uh, all over the country when I'm teaching. Uh, he said, uh, uh, Ronald told me, he said, Daddy, if you want to know what the hardest thing in the world for me to do, he said, it's to be your son. He said, that's the hardest thing. He said, not only are you a preacher, and, uh, uh, but you are the, uh, a policeman, and not only are you a policeman, you're the chief of police, and everybody expects me to be perfect. And so I, I, I shared with him, I said, I said, you proved to them that you wasn't, huh? <laughs> that, but, that's a, but, but now that particular child, today more than any of my children, think more of me, I believe. That's a, and I, I think they all love me, but, but it's, it's, it's something about that one. He would actually kill you for me. And the rest of them probably think about it, but he would kill you because of the thing that, I, that I, I've, been, I've been able to share with him down through the years. And, uh, and maybe, uh, maybe God uh, has another plan for me. If he does, I'm, I'm, I'm 78 years old, but I'm ready for that challenge. Because if God said it, he'll fulfill it. Y'all be good to each other. Hello, my name is uh, Minister Mary Jane Miller, 
and I have actually been to FBC for 40 years, and it's been a blessing. We have started out with six small children, and they all sit on the seat with me. <laughs> I sit, they sit, and the other one sit, and whatever. But it's been a blessing. I have got to meet a lot of people. A lot of them are gone now. And I mean, they was wonderful. They was elderly people who I really love. <laughs> I really sort of don't do too much talking within my age group and what have you. But I love older people and children. They are my joy, my heart. So anyway, but I'm glad to be able to be standing here leading up to our before year anniversary. It's been a blessing. God has been good. We've had some good times. We've had some sad times. We've had some troubling times, but through it all, God has brought us here. So I would just like to say to all of you all, be strong, keep your faith up. When you feel like you can't go any further, reach out, get in contact with the Lord. He said he was there to help us bear our burdens, and he will do that, I can tell you for myself. I started out, my mother would always come over for our anniversary, and as time went on, she was no longer here. My father left, my mother-in-law, who was a blessing to me, she was always here, but she's gone home too. But I would just like to say to all of you, you all know I love you. I try to do what I can, when I can, and however I can to help out in the body of Christ. So I would just like to say, keep strong. There are things that are happening, but God has already predicted these things. He said that we will have trials and tribulation, and there are a lot more that's got to come. But if we keep our faith in Him, our trust in Him, we keep pressing and calling on Him, He will deliver us. So to you, to the whole church, I would just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and I love you. Because I, I think that, that if a person loves Christ, Christ is the only one that can perfect it. Um, you got to have a, a, a mate that will stand by you through critical times. And, and, uh, and God gave me the perfect mate for me. Not that she's a perfect woman and not that I'm a perfect man, but, but, uh, but she's perfect for me. She, she's what uh, been there for me all down through the years before I, uh, before I was saved, she was. Um, before I was committed to tithing, she was already doing it. These, these things that, I, that, that was a challenge to me. I found myself rising above my own challenges and suspicions and, uh, and, uh, and allowing God to enter into my life and, uh, and, and, to, and to be able now to teach others the glory of God and what God can do once you commit yourself to Him. And that's what I'm challenging the entire world, especially the men of the world. Come hell or high water, lead. Lead your house. If, uh, if, even if you have to leave your house, lead your house. That was God's intention from the beginning of the world. And, uh, and, and, and different things has happened over a period of time. And, uh, but nevertheless, with God in our lives, I haven't seen an obstacle yet that we weren't able to overcome. And, and, and yeah. Happy anniversary, Grandma and Granddaddy, Pastor and First Lady Miller. We love you, and this is from the grandkids. Because the Lord feel today, yeah. he gonna free you from your sin. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Is there any sinners in the building? Dr. Miller, yes, 
First Baptist Warrington, I want to say congratulations to Dr. Miller on this wonderful day in the middle of a pandemic. I give kudos to First Baptist of Warrington for blessing pa Pastor Miller for 20, not, not 29 years, for you blessing him for 39, it's not 39 years. You blessing him for, and Sister Miller, for 40 years of service. Congratulations, happy anniversary. Love you. Pastor Norman Baker, Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church, um, former son of First Baptist Church of Warrington. I want to uh, just share one of my most memorable moments about our pastor. Uh, my most memorable moment is when we shared uh, tears together. I had went away for a while doing something that I shouldn't have been doing as a preacher, and he consulted me. He scolded me first, then he consulted me, and and let me know why he was concerned about me. And then a tragedy happened. And just so happened I wasn't a part of that tragedy. And his words actually saved my life. And so we shared a moment of tears that day. And I'll never forget that day. I thank him for his teaching, his, his fatherly advice and guidance. So I want to say to you, Dr. James H. Miller Sr. and to First Lady Lady Mary Miller, that we love you. Congratulations on your 40th year anniversary, and we look for many more years to come. My name is David Knight. I'm a member of First Baptist Church of Warrington. I've been a member of First Baptist Church for 35 years. Pastor Miller, I want to congratulate you on your anniversary of 40 years. Uh, I have enjoyed serving you and being uh, on the deacon board and trustee board. I think what you, I appreciate what you bring to the table. I mean, your honesty, your love for God, and most of all, the love for your members. It shows that you care for your members. And I just want to encourage you to keep on, as long as God gives you the strength that you keep on. I can't tell you to slow down because you won't listen to me no way. But anyway, I just want to congratulate you and, 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 and wish you Godspeed. Oh, and Sister Miller, I know he couldn't be the man that he is if it wasn't for you. So I'm just going to ask you to hang in there with him. I know sometimes he gets a little hard-headed, but go ahead, hang in there with him because he needs you. Thank you. Can I say thank you? <laughs> thank you very much. My name is Terry Alexander Sr., and I'm the executive assistant to Dr. Miller here at First Baptist Church of Warrington. I've been a member of First Baptist Church of Warrington ever since 1986. I've done 24 years in the Navy and I've been to a lot of leadership schools and a lot of leadership seminars. And Pastor Miller is the epitome of a leader. And not only is he the epitome of a leader, but he is the epitome of what God looks for in leadership. He is a man that is after God's own heart. I would like to uh, tell Pastor Miller and, and Sister Miller to keep uh, trusting in the Lord and keep uh, preaching and teaching uh, from the Bible and uh, continue with the biblical view and uh, God will continue to strengthen him and provide us the leadership that we need. We appreciate you guys for 40 years of services, for being here, for the First Baptist Church, for the First Baptist community, for the fellowship, for the love, for the integrity, and especially for the commitment. You didn't quit on us, Pastor. And we thank you. Minister Miller, we thank you for being here. We just want to say we love you. We're gonna surround you with love and, and do everything that we can do in our power to make transitions and, and everything going forward easier and not hard. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Pastor Retired Richard L. Hines Jr. And I wanted to take this opportunity to wish our dear friend Pastor James 
and Minister Mary Jane Miller a happy 40th anniversary. They are good people. Now James and I, we farmed together and uh, I taught him how to pick peas sitting on a bucket. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're just good folk and I wanted to just wish them the very best and uh, First Baptist Warrington, you're blessed because of Mary Jane and James Miller. Thank you. The vision, the vision was clear, and, uh, and as the people in the area began to, uh, to learn about us, and, uh, and we began to grow. We began to grow. Uh, when, when I came to First Baptist, it was just a, a small, small church, maybe 150, um, and, and, uh, and it constantly grew, and, and uh, it immediately we knew that we were going to have to do something. Now, we went through three, I think it was three phases of building. And uh, we uh, and, and God kept kept doing what God do, and and, and and our church was basically bankrupt when we came. We had six hundred dollars in, in in the treasure when I came here, and uh, and and shortly after that, and we we began. We we, we had a plan for uh, uh, being uh, very very cautious with the with the monies of the church, and and after after the first year, we had fifty two thousand dollars in the bank. And, uh, and, and then we started thinking about growing. Uh, we started thinking about adding onto the uh, previous building, and, and we did. We, we decided to, to, uh, to push the church back in, in, in certain areas, and, uh, and it would have given us uh, 60, 62 new people in the sanctuary and uh, extend the choir loft back. And, uh, but, but the problem after was, uh, was greater than the problem at, at, at first because before we knocked the walls out, we had already taken in 200 people. And so we were still putting people where everybody, no one, no one could get in the building, people were leaving and, and that was no, no way of doing things. And then, then our next phase, we added, we added um, a children's church, we, we, we built a sanctuary. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, we built the education building. Uh, back here, and, and that took some of the relief, and we, 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 we had our first youth, youth chapel, and God blessed us there, and we continued to grow, but, but, but we knew that even before they finished the construction, that the vision was not broad enough. And the next vision that I, that I had was, um, was when uh, we was just flat overcrowded, and we were losing people, and, and once a person has turned away, because uh, people got to have the space. And, and then the Lord put in my spirit and showed me the church that we would build in the, in, in, the, in the future. Now, the one thing that God never did show me, and that was a name on the church, like First Baptist Warrington out there. On, no, nothing, nothing said. So one thing that I knew, that, that, I, that I had to uh, initiate a drive to build that particular church, but it never said where. To this day, the uh, Lord never said where it was going to be. But I knew it was going to be somewhere in the world, and 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 I cannot draw. I'm I'm not an artist, as you know. Now I, I can't do stuff like that. But I sat down with a um, uh, with a legal pad, and I drew the way the church would look, as far as the seating, 
the balcony, all of that thing. The Lord allowed me to put it on, to put it on paper. And I, and when we went to look to, to an architect, and I just showed him that he says, "Is there anything you'd like?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "I want something like this." He said, "I can do that." And uh, and, uh, and 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 it, and it kind of went from there. This is the same architect that. That um, that build uh, the, the the church over on on, on Davis, um, over by Woodland. I can't think of the name of that church. Is uh, uh, Brent Brent Baptist Church. Brent, if, you, if you know it's Brent Baptist Church, it's got some of the same features that um, that that we had, and and uh, we, we 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 got into seating. And uh, we, we knew that we wanted to have, uh, have seating for at, at, at least 15, 16, 1600 people. And we, 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 we also knew that we wanted to be able to, to make it uh, eye friendly that when people come and look, that it looked like a church, thus the columns on the, on the outside. And we did that and we, then we thought about the steeple, all of those things in the initial process of building the, of building the, the physical building. And, and this time, uh, I, I feel that, uh, that my vision was, was, was great, except God did, God did the planning. Uh, one of my deacons, uh, Deacon Celestine, when I told them what, uh, what, what the vision was, and, and, uh, and Deacon, Deacon Jordan told me this. He said, Pastor, that's not a vision. He said, that's a nightmare. And, I, <laughs> and to him it was, because he couldn't see it. And the, the one thing that it, it, it took me about six months to a year uh, to get my vision out of my head into their head. But, I, but I'm going to tell you this. Um, uh, when they got it, they got it. And when I, when I, when I talk about the, uh, the building uh, onto the old building, uh, in, in, in our five years here, we was here five years, we began to build the old building, including the first extension and the and the and the other one, because it went right out of one into the other, and uh, it cost us three hundred plus thousand dollars, and we paid cash. We paid cash. Um, the people had a mind to work. They had a mind to. They were they were driven, and, and whatever we ask, and uh, and they did. And, and, and one thing I, I would say to to younger preachers and younger pastors that, um, that if you want your congregation to do something, you be right there with them doing it yourself out front. I think a pastor should lead and, uh, and, and we led by example. My wife and I, we paid our tithes. If, uh, and whatever, um, whatever the committees ask, we always paid more than they did. And, uh, and, and it, it takes that, it, it takes all of that. And when, when, when God is pushing it, uh, like he like he did this this particular experience, uh, he, he allowed it to go through. We we had very few disagreements, um, especially on the initial things, and uh, and and everything just went so smooth uh, because it was God driven. And, and I, I think life is like that. If you're God driven, if God is in it, it's going to work. If God is not in it, you're going to fall flat on your face. And uh, and God was in this, and the people had a mind to work. We roll up our sleeves, we went to work, people could continue to come, they continue to be a part of, and, uh, and, uh, and, and it ends up, the, the finished product is what we, and I don't know today if it's finished. And I'm, I'm 78 years old and I'm still having visions. And I'm serious as a heart attack, and then that's still one other thing I'd love to do before I uh, walked away from here, or carried away from here, however I leave here. But, <laughs> I, I, I love him, I love his, his whole entire family. He's good, he's always been good. And what I like about him so much, he was his own man. He is his own man. He's not gonna let nobody come in and run over him and tell him how to run the church when he knows what he's doing. So that, I think that was one of the things that everybody liked about him, because he wasn't no pushover. I love him, I love all the children, and I love his wife. That's my baby's baby. <laughs> and I love them all. That's all I got to say about the mean old thing telling me what nothing wrong with you.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad. And we would just like to say happy 40th year anniversary to Pastor James and Mary Miller. Uh, and we pray that God will bless you with many more. And I'd like to say personally, thank you for working with me, you know, Pastor Miller. And, and I'm looking forward to working with you again. And I want to leave this with you. I know the Lord. He will make a way. Yes, he will. Be blessed. Well, first I would say congratulations on 40 years, and then I, I would just tell him to keep on keeping on, uh, and may God keep give him the strength to do that. And I, like I said, uh, of those 40 years, I've been here almost 30 of them, and, and so I know, I know his strength and I know what God has given him, and I just tell him to keep on leaning on God. And Ms. Miller as well, you know, you know, she goes through her struggles, I understand that, and, uh, sometimes. Uh, I, I'm a part of that struggle, okay, okay? Because I give them just as hard time as anybody else, okay? And, uh, and I say that in jest, and, and I try not to do that because I try to be a help for them, and, and uh, when I see them, uh, within their struggles, and I don't mean financial or anything like that, I'm just talking about uh, physically, emotionally, or what have you, then I, I'm there to do what I can do. And I, you know, uh, as well as sometimes to point out who they may need to go to to get the help they need. Good morning to everyone. Hi, I'm Pastor Earl F. Jackson, pastor at Damascus Road Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, I am a dear friend of Dr. Miller, the Right Reverend Dr. Bishop Miller. Amen. We're great friends. have been traveling companions for different conventions and to congresses and national conventions. We've just been great friends. And not only that, he's been a great mentor in my life. I'm grateful for him and I thank God for him staying on the wall for 40 years here at First Baptist of Warrington. Thank God not only for him, but I thank God for Sister Miller as well, who has been a great asset. Been that lady that is, she's always been, great sister of mine, and she's been walking beside him all of these years. So grateful for the you, and we just thank God for you, and we pray that you will continue to be about the Father's business. Thank you for continuing to mentor me. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for being there when I needed someone to call, amen, when we needed a prayer. We prayed with and for each other. So thank God for you. Thank God for this church. And I thank God for First Baptist finding not robbery to set you and Sister Miller aside, amen, to show their love and appreciation. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Have a blessed day. Hello, Pastor Miller. Greetings to you as well as the entire First Baptist Church of Warrington Church family. My name is Joseph Marshall and I was asked to come on and give a pastoral shout out by way of the celebrating of 40 years of pastorship. Wow, 40 years is a long time. I believe scripturally when we read our Bibles, the Bible lets us know that there was a group of people called the children of Israel. They themselves, they had wandered in the wilderness but their wandering was not by themselves because Moses was called to the Old Testament pastorate to help lead them into the promised land. Though Moses did not make it there, he almost did. You, sir, as an outside observer, I can say that you have taken First Baptist Church of Warrington to the promised land. Not only have you done it for them in Warrington, but you've also did it for others outside of Warrington as well. I just want to raise my hand and be one of those witnesses who can testify to the impact that you have made in my life. You have always been a voice of reason. You have always spoken words of prophecy in which all of them have come to pass and I am so eternally grateful for that. There have been times when I may have been uncertain or maybe did not know what direction that God was taking me in and he used you as a tool to voice that which was divine 
in order to ease and soothe my human concerns. And so with that being said, I am so eternally grateful for that. I revere you, I adore you, I salute you, and I pray that though we have this COVID-19 to deal with, that this 40th year pastoral celebration is as festive and as celebratory as possible. Again, thank you for all you have been and thank you for who you shall continue to be if I know you the way that I know you. Thank you for being a man's man. And to Lady Miller and to your entire family, please accept my sentiments during this celebration. May God bless and keep you, sir, is my prayer. My name is Reverend Kenneth Lee. And my name is Sister Teresa Lee. We, I have been here at First Baptist Church of Warrington for the past 10 years. And I've been here for about five years. And here at First Baptist Church of Warrington, praise is what we do. So on this 40th year anniversary, we want to say thank you, Pastor Miller and Minister Mary Miller, for your continuous years here at First Baptist. And we want to say Congratulations, Mama Miller, and congratulations, Pastor Miller, on your 40th year anniversary. We love you so much. Yes, because we have been Millerized. <laughs> yes, we have. We've been Millerized. And congratulations again. Hi, I'm Reverend Eugene Franklin. I'm Associate Minister at First Baptist Church of Warrington, and I've been here for 34 years. And the 40 years that they have been here has been nothing but growth, and I'm not talking about just the campus, but everyone who set foot through that door has grown. I know most of the members that are here and most of the members that have come and come back. Growth process and whatever, whatever that we can do for them is deserving. It's deserving because of their fellowship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been demonstrated not only in their ministry, but by the growth of this church. And so for Pastor Miller, Sister Miller, I cherish you. I congratulate you. You have received your reward. And if you look around, be proud of your service and please accept the blessings that God has given you and I pray that he will continue to bless you forevermore. Amen. The most memorable moment is when my father passed and the service was in Memphis. We're talking approximately eight hours away. And Dr. Miller uh, made it a point that he was going to be there. And they got up early the morning before, uh, drove the eight hours, in fact, they made it there just as the funeral was getting started. And they stayed throughout the entire service. Can't ask any more than that. Especially, you know, you can understand if it was something that was here locally, but, but we're talking an eight hour drive. That's 16 hours that they put uh, in that effort. And you can't help but love a gentleman that has that type of love for his people. So you can't help but to follow a, a, a leader that really and truly shows you the true meaning of leadership. Pastor Miller, 40 years is a mighty long time, but you've weathered the storm, the good days, the bad days, and you have taken us along this journey. And we thank you for it. And not only you, but we thank Mother Miller for being there to assist you in getting us to where we desire to be. You, you know, we're, as we've always learned, we're no better 
than our spouses. And, if you're, and she has been the ultimate in spouses. She's, she is the first lady of First Baptist, and she deserves the honor. Congratulations. This land as holy ground. And I turn the spade. And we dedicate it in the name of God. Amen. 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 And I dedicate this shovel in the name of the Son. Amen. Amen. And I dedicate this spade. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I, I would think uh, leading the congregation into the last phase of building. Um, this building and then um, a part of, 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 of the vision was also the uh, Family Life Center. And, uh, and, and it did feel like a completion after we built the Life Center some five years uh, ten years later, after the construction of the uh, of the worship center, and so uh, so I, I would say leading them in the building uh, uh, and, and and leading them from phase to phase to phase until we reached completion, I, that was a godsend. That was a godsend. We, we we had no interruptions when God gave us something to do. And, and, and this I say to anybody, brothers and sisters, that is that we make sure that God is leading us. And if God is leading us, then it's going to work. It, 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 might, it might seem like it during, during, during time of your life that, that it's not going to make it, that you're not going to, or that you're putting too much on the group, but you, you'll find out that, that, uh, that you're not, that you're not. If, if God is in the lead, uh, that, the, that when it's time to do what you need to do, the finance is going to be there. Um, we, had, we have never had any problem of financing our building, we've never had any problem uh, making sure our notes have been paid. Uh, we've never been, been in the red for anything. We, uh, we paid our bills and so we've become good citizens in, in, uh, in a scammy county floor. And I thank God for you. I thank God for people like you that, that, took, the, that took the vision and made it a mission and then accomplished the vision. Amen? Amen. Amen. You've done that. And so at, at now that this phase is completed, we have papers to say that it is. And then we, now we will open this Family Life Center in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. David, you'll hold that sign. Let us enter our Family Life Center. We come this morning to say happy 40th yes. anniversary to our pastor and first lady on their 40th anniversary. They have definitely been a blessing to us in our life. And we just found it not robbery this morning to come and say happy 40th, 40th anniversary, anniversary from the Baskins. the Baskins. Hello, I'm uh, Mary Alice Jackson, a minister here at First Baptist. Um, and it's such an honor to be here to give my um, comments on Pastor and Miss Miller's anniversary. Uh, we've been here since 1991 and um, just have truly been blessed. Uh, Pastor has taught me so much about the Word. I've been in many churches all my life that he has taught me, and it's not that the others weren't teaching, I just wasn't listening, but God made me ready when I got here. Um, I really am appreciative of Miss Miller for her kindness, all her acts of kindness over the years. She has been a wonderful inspiration to my daughters and to myself. So I just really want to thank you for this time and we really wish them a wonderful and blessed anniversary. Thank you. I 
Hello, First Baptist. My name is Tony Freeney, and I have been a member here at First Baptist since 2003. It's not that hard to say how much I love Pastor Miller and Ms. Miller. God knows that they have had a great impact on my life, and I would have to say on my marriage, you know, my family life. So many ways and so many positive ways they have impacted my life, and I'm just grateful to God that He led me here. I'm not here by mistake. I'm here because this is where God said I needed to be, and I'm, get, I'm getting everything that God has intended for me to get. And I'm so grateful to them and so grateful to God. And I love you, Pastor Miller. I love you even more, Miss Miller. You are my hero. Well, good afternoon. God bless you, Dr. and Sister James Henry Miller Sr. I want to give you congratulations on your fourth year pastoral anniversary. And thank God for you too also, Sister Miller, for being by his side for the last 40 years in his pastorate. I want to let you know from the end of y'all Missionary Baptist Church, on behalf of myself and my wife, we want to send congratulations to y'all. And just know, it's Miller time. Congratulations, Brother James on your 40th anniversary there at First Baptist Church. I'm grateful uh, that I was asked to share a word on this special day for you and Mary. I would truly say without hesitation that you are a great pastor. James, the lives that you have touched over these 40 years uh, of ministry there at First Baptist, the lives that have been changed uh, for the kingdom because of your preaching, and your pastoral care ministry is truly amazing. Not to mention the number of persons that have been called into full-time ministry, trained, discipled by you, and are out there now serving the Lord. You've truly been uh, both an inspiration and a great example for me, and continue to be a, uh, a great inspiration as we minister together in the unity movement. I know without your involvement, we couldn't have come this far in the number of uh, churches and pastors that have joined uh, this great uh, move of God, and I'm so thankful for you. Indeed, I just want to uh, wish you and Mary the best and enjoy this great celebration uh, that your church has given you. It's well-deserved. You mean a lot, uh, not only to me, but to the kingdom of God. May God bless you as you continue your journey of faith, your ministry there at First Baptist, and your ministry to many, many other churches and people in this community. God bless you, James. Pastor Miller and Miss Miller, you, you are the two sweetest peoples I know. I don't want nobody else to be my pastor while I'm living, living but you. That tire thought was pretty good. Ain't the Lord all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? I, I still look pretty good, girl. Ain't the Lord all right? I stopped by to tell you the socks that I had on. You say I look pretty good. had some good days, yeah, he had some bad days. So I will say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for Pastor Miller. Congratulations, my pastor, on your fourth year. Uh, when I come here, I never thought I would be here. Uh, the, the amount of time I've been here, 30-some years, and you was a novelty to me when I first come here. I came to see 
you uh, crawl over the pews, uh, jump up and down, and pull your shirt off. However, uh, the first day I got something better than just seeing you doing that. Uh, the spirit hit me. And I said, I'm going back. I told my wife, I said, I'm going back again. And if it's the same, I'm joining the church, whether you join or not. And praise God, I'm still here. So that's being said, uh, 33, 34 years I've been here now. And you're my pastor, and you're going to be my pastor. If I die before you, you'll preach for me. Yeah. If not, I'll be here. And Mother Miller, you have really set the example of what, uh, not only a first lady, but what a mother should be. And, and, and the fact that uh, I see a child cry, and I see you get up and you go get the child, and immediately the child quit crying. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's just in your genes, but you have that touch with the kids and everything. So. You and the pastor, y'all are a fine couple, and I love you guys, and anything I can do for you is done. You don't have to wonder, will I do it or can I do it? If I can do it, it's done. I love you. Y'all take care. And I'm going to tell you like you tell us, be good to each other. Thank you. All right. Good morning and uh, good afternoon to Dr. and Mother Miller on your a special day. I thank God for you. And I just want to uh, say to each, to both of you, uh, you are very special to me, my pastor and my first lady. And I do appreciate the both of you. Uh, even through my uh, times of trials, you have been there for me. And uh, you are very special to me. And I just thank God for you. And I pray that uh, your uh, day be very special. I, be, I pray that it be the best day that you ever had. And I know it will because I know that First Baptists go all out to make sure their pastor and First Lady are taken care of. And I just want to say it to you, congratulations from one of your sons. Matter of fact, your special son. <laughs> Thank God for you. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Good morning. My name is Deacon Allen Kay and I'm the uh, chairman of Deacon Board for First Baptist Church of Warrington. I've been a member here since October 2005, and I am uh, really elated. Uh, from 2005, actually, from hearing Pastor, he has been awesome for me and to me. He's not only a mentor, uh, but he's an advisor. He's my spiritual leader. And he's a father figure that I was looking for as I continue on in my uh, life and in my uh, relationship as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a brother to others. And uh, he just inspires me. He, he, he lives what he preaches. And he's a man of God that I can follow and I will follow. Good morning, everyone. I just want to say congratulations to Pastor Miller on so many years of being here at First Baptist. I thank you, Pastor Miller, for being the man that you are, the leader that you are, the godly man that you are, and I love you dearly. Mrs. Miller, you know, when I first came here, I was kind of hesitant to approach you because I'd never known a first lady like you. And then when we came in the arena, you was back there mopping, picking up paper, serving people. I have never seen a first lady like that before. I thank you for being who you are, who you are to everyone here at the church, and especially who you are to me. You're someone that I can talk to and be there for me and pray for me and pray with me. Pastor Miller, I love you to the both of you. Congratulations. I'd just like to say to our pastor, our great pastor, Dr. James H. Miller Sr., and our First Lady Mother Mary Jane Miller, congratulations on 40 years. I have not been with you for 40 years, but I've been with you for 28 years, and I have learned so much from you guys, and, 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 and Pastor, we thank you so much for sharing Mama with us and, and uh, teaching us how she teaches us, and, we thank you for the word that have come forth from you, and we pray God will have you 
to, to do many, many more teachings and sermons because you are a great pastor and a great leader. Thank you for being the love of our lives, First Baptist Church of Warrington. Thank you. And I heard Paul say it, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord and, and God. So, right Dr. Miller, uh, you have been one of the closest brothers and friend and co-labor, amen, that I have ever, ever met. And I remember when I was the first West Florida Baptist Association moderator, amen, I inherited one day a financial indebtedness and I needed to make a difficult decision for the association. Dr. Miller, you remember that it was you that I called and you guided and you advised me to make the right decision. And I wanna to say to you again, thank you so much there are many, many more areas that I can attest to um, to express our appreciation, but time will not allow me to. So in closing, in the abundance of appreciation, my brother, thank you, my friend. May our sovereign God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to bless you, your wife, your family, your congregation, and that God will continue to keep you throughout your entire life. Again, may God bless you, we love you, and guess what? I got $1,000 to give you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I got it with right with me. I got it with me right now. Amen, I'm leaving it. <laughs> love you, Doc, God bless, bye-bye. What can I say about my pastor? I've been here since 2002, and I cannot tell you, I just love him. I love him. He, he's just mm, mm, good. I love my pastor. I wouldn't, I, I just can't describe him, y'all. You just don't know what he does, and, and he preaches to me, and he sings to me, and he just, I just love him. I just love it. So I hope I made this short and sweet. They say my time is up. And, and uh, Miss Miller, my mom, oh man, I'm so glad that, oh, I call a lot. I talk to a lot, I love her too. They are both, they the type of people that you can't help but to love. And I truly love them both from the bottom of my heart, my family, and, and I, they all both of them are mm, mm, good. What can I say? But I got to make this short because they done cut me off and you know I like to talk. Love you all. Thank you and happy, happy anniversary. I, I have always aimed for the top. I have never honored a second place finish in my life. I feel like it just simply means that I got some more work to do. And, uh, and, and, and that's why I said earlier, out of all of my jobs, God have allowed me to go all the way to the top. And all those, and not that I'm any better and probably not even close to have the knowledge, but I could use somebody else's knowledge to gain gain knowledge and strength to, st to steady move forward. And it was, it was unheard of in, in those days that an African-American boy I mean, from where he was would end up chief of police in a place like, like Foley, Alabama, Baldwin County, Alabama. And, uh, and, 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 and the people put me in that position. Matt Hoke honored it, but he honored what the people wanted. When I had to take the job for, uh, because uh, the person that had it uh, 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 had to step down and I was next in line. Uh, I stayed there as long as I wanted to. 
and, uh, and could be there. No, I couldn't be there. I'd be too old now. But, uh, but I was there, and, 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 and God, God, God challenged us to challenge ourselves. Unless you try to do something, you're not going to do it well. You're not going to do it well. These are things I try to nurtured me. Um, I let him know that um, God had called me into the ministry before and he just opened his heart to me. Um, he just let me know that he would tell me what was right no matter what and if I wanted to learn, um, if I needed his guidance, he was here. Mother Miller is truly a first lady. She is a lady. She's loving. She's kind and she has no filter, she's gonna tell you the truth. And I love her for that. She checks on, on us. Um, we are all their children. Whether she had us or not, we can depend and count on them. So I look forward to being up under his leadership until God takes me home or takes him home. But whatever you need from me, Pastor, all you have to do is let me know. I'm just a phone call away. I love you, we love you, God bless you. What about you? What about you? Tell your neighbor, you can stay here if you want to, but when Gabriel, when Gabriel, oh, when Gabriel, oh, when Gabriel, oh, my name is Ollie Ganey, and I've been a member here at First Baptist Church for three decades, 30 years and a little better. And since being here, Pastor Miller has been such an inspiration to me. And the most memorable thing that I remember about Pastor is witnessing him preaching two five-night revivals, service here, 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 3 o'clock, with so much power and conviction and anointing, I'm like, wow. I say, will I stand for my pastor? I sure will, because I know that that's not something every man or woman or God can do. And when I think about Sister Miller, I see a woman of God that is ready to do whatever needs to be done. Anytime you can see a pastor's wife take off her pumps, and, and, or no, I take that back. Not take her pumps off. Work in the kitchen in her pumps. I say, that's my first lady. And I would like to wish both of them a happy 40th year anniversary and many more. I love you too. Basically, um, I'm a nut for studying the Word of God. I, uh, I constantly, constantly study. Now, um, my, doctor, my doctorate degree is, an, uh, 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 is, is not what, what they're calling these days an earned degree. It's, uh, it, it's given on merit. It, um, in other words, someone saw the work that, uh, that we had done here and, uh, and, and that particular college decided that they would, would give an honorary doctorate. But, I've gone to many schools, and, and uh, the University of Alabama, the Auburn. I've gone to. Uh, I've got major certificates from Alabama University. I hate to tell y'all that, roll tide, because I'm I'm an Auburn guy, and uh, I have major honorary degrees from um, Auburn University, and, uh, and 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 also I have a a, a major degree, and all, all of this is. Um, uh, uh, I, I allude to was part of the other job that I had um, because uh, in, in order to um, to keep your certification we had continuing education now I could have put all of that together but but that that wasn't the thrust that wasn't the thrust uh, the thrust was learning my craft no matter what I was doing when I was a policeman I wanted to know all that I needed to know about that, so um, so I took many, many, many case, many, many um, um, 
uh, classes uh, on, on, on development, uh, uh, human developments and, 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 and all of this and uh, management, all of that. And, and, uh, and, and that helped me on, on the other job and, and the city of Foley paid for it. But, uh, but I will tell you that it helped me more here than it ever helped me there because I, because I, I really were able to put, it, put all of that in use. And I, I had some brothers to, to, to tell me and, and many, many brothers out there uh, have an honorary doctorate like, like I did. And, uh, and, uh, and, and in, in one of our meetings, a uh, uh, brother said, well, this one and that one have a earned degree. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, but you gotta have this, you gotta have that. No, you gotta study. You study the word of God. And I, and I shared this with him. I said, I don't care what you say. Nobody's gonna stand in my face and tell me that my degree wasn't earned. But the, the, the simple fact, when, when, uh, when the Lord sent us to First Baptist Church, we didn't even have $10,000. We were sitting on one piece of property. Uh, the church was on one piece of property and the parking lot was on the other. That's all we had. And, and, uh, and, and today you're looking at a building that, that, that working upwards of $7 million. I said, so you're gonna tell me that's not earned? And, uh, uh, and, 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 and so I, I get various answers about that. So, so yes, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my degree. I'm proud of how I got it. And uh, <laughs> I don't intend to earn another, I'll get another made by studying, but, uh, but it took a lot of work to get us where we are. And, uh, and like I said, whatever you do is God-led. If it's God-led, he will allow you to accomplish things. Um, never, there never was a time in our life when we took on a job that, um, that we didn't end up basically at the top of that job. I've had, I've had four jobs in my life. My first one, I worked in a nursery. I learned all, all I could by raising flowers and plants and all of that. That's, that's why I tell you I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and when we are dealing with plants, because I've done that. I was taught that and in and, and, and every place that I ever gone, I learned the craft and then to this day, I, I, can, I can speak on those things. And you go around my yard, you'll see some of those things. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and every time that I left a job, it was because God had given me an increase. Uh, more money or a better working condition. I work for a place called Fat Hope Hatchery. We actually uh, hatched chickens. My, my, my brother was a farmer and I, I ended up the, uh, his assistant farmer uh, uh, on, on that particular job. And, and I, I stayed on each of those jobs. Um, seven years and, and you know seven years is supposed to be the completion <laughs> and uh and, and one day I, I, I decided to leave that job and go into law enforcement and um and 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 and, and, and that and, and that happened and people ask me all the time how did i end up in law enforcement how, how do you how can you be a preacher and uh and law enforcement too and i and i tell them this maybe all of them ought to go to the police department or maybe all of them ought to go to the police academy and they'll learn how to deal with folks. <laughs> and never was a time that I had it, uh, that, I, that I didn't know how to deal with whatever situation that I was in, involved in at, at that time. And, uh, and this time I stayed the task more than seven years. Got into it on a bet. And, uh, and, and I, 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 can, I can look back over my life and I don't know what I would have done had I not got in. It's, that's the second love of my life. Pastoring is my first love, and, uh, and, and, and working in law enforcement was my, my second love. My brother, uh, a statement came out, this was in 1971, um, and, and we didn't have a black police officer in the city of Foley. And, uh, and, 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 the, and the news article said that, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, that it was a, the mayor had opened it up for a black police officer in the city of Foley, and, and it was open once before, but, but, but no one uh, applied for the job. And I told my brother, we was, we was at lunch one day, and I, I told him, I said, look, I said, um, that's a shame. I said, all of those people in our area and nobody applied. I said, now, that, uh, somebody should at least apply. And, uh, and my brother David looked at me and said, why don't you, why don't you apply? I said, well, uh, I said, I will. And he's my boss, and it was his week to drive and his car. And so um, I see, and he says, oh, you just talking like you always do. I said, I tell you what, you, 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 you throw me the keys and I'm gonna go down there and show interest. 
I said, I, I, I'm not saying I want the job, but I'm, I bet you next time they can't say that nobody didn't apply for the job. Went down there and, uh, and I did that, and uh, uh, the judge was in the, in the building, the chief wasn't there, and uh, the first thing the judge asked me if I could write. <laughs> I won't forget that. I said, I said, of course. He said, well, well, I'll write a little note to the chief, and I'll give it to him, and uh, and uh, and, and he'll and, and he'll call you. And 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 basically, it started there. Uh, but but what I didn't know that the chief of police uh, knew my wife's family. In fact, my wife's father uh, was was raised in the same house of the chief of police. That uh, uh, her father would basically took care of him. You know, they, how you you live, you 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 working all the time, but you're taking care of the family, and that side. Now I don't know if they if they hired me for what I uh, what they saw in me, or uh, because of what they saw in my father-in-law. But however, I got the job. It was a great marriage, and uh, and, and I stayed there for for, for 34 years. So um, uh, it worked. It, it it all worked together. I worked under some good folks. Uh, my mayor was always good, and uh, they, they allowed me to move. Um, and I, I was the first black person uh, in the in the county uh, to be a chief of police that really had authority, arrest power that could arrest everybody, not just a part of the uh, of, of the community. When I went in, I had authority to arrest everybody, white folks, black folks, polka dot, whoever they were. I had that authority to do. But I learned to treat everybody right. There, I, I think, we, we, when we are dealing with uh, people, I don't care who they are, you, 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 you treat people like people. And if you do that, you, you get along. Yes, ma'am. Loving and caring for everyone. And pastor, you just can't beat him as a man or a pastor because as I said, he's a man after God's own heart. And I tell you, when he gives us the word, it just takes, takes you as if you're right there. The Lord is speaking to you and not to him, but he's speaking through him. And for that, I say thank you. They are the best. You can ask for a better friend, a better pastor and first lady. And for 40 years, I congratulate you and wish you 40 Prison. more. And so I just thank him for influencing my life and allowing God to use me and use the gifts that God put in me. And so for this, I want to ask us to congratulate our pastor for influencing our lives and allowing us to do God's will before him. I congratulate Dr. James Henry Miller Sr., our pastor and minister Mary Jane Miller, our mother, and our friend. To God be the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hello, I'm Donnie Reed. I have been at First Baptist for now 54 years. I um, was here when Pastor Miller came. Uh, we've seen several changes and upgrades over the course of the time that he's been here. And I'd like to just con congratulate you, Pastor Miller, on 40 years and wish you 40 years more, and Miss Miller. Hi, good morning. I'm Deborah Williams. I'm um, Mother Williams, Iseline Williams' daughter. We have been at First Baptist about 25 years, and we have been under the leadership of Pastor Miller. And so I just want to say that I love him and Sister Miller, love you too. But Pastor is just like a father to me, because my dad died when we first moved down here, and he just like a dad, father, and go to him whenever I want to, you know, talk to him, and he's always there for us, me and my mom. And uh, I would just like to say that I love you, and Sister Miller, you just like a mom. We can just talk, I call you, we talk, and I see you, you talk, and just, just whenever I want to talk to somebody, my first lady, she's there for me. And I just want to wish y'all a happy 40th anniversary. And me and my mom both, we love you, and happy anniversary. Hi, my name is Kathy Miller. I have been a member here at First Baptist for 37 years, 35 which have been consistent. Um, 
I have been truly blessed being here at First Baptist since coming here. I've been a member of various organizations such as the Young Adult Choir and now the Revival Choir. My father-in-law, my pastor, which is also my father-in-law, is a true, true, true man of God. I would recommend him to anybody who's looking for a church home. And his wife, First Lady, my mother-in-law, Ms. Minister Mary Jane Miller is truly a woman of God herself. She encourages, she comforts, she tells you when you're right as well as when you're wrong. So I would like to say and take this time to tell you congratulations on 40 wonderful and productive years here at First Baptist Church. Hi, I'm Deacon Brian McCreary. I have been here at First Baptist for 38 years, and I'd like to say that uh, Pastor Miller's preaching has truly been an inspiration in my life, and I'd just like to wish him and Mother Miller um, many more uh, successful uh, years here at First Baptist. I love you, and just keep doing what you do. You've truly been an inspiration in my life, in my family's life, and we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. Hi, my name is Vincent Fagan, better known as Bebe. Been here over 35 years. I started directing in 1992. It's been a blessing because Pastor Mel always gave me great, 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 great uh, energy and let me do what I do. I want to thank him and Pastor Miss Miller for just being there for me and strengthening me through all the trials and tribulations I've been through. And on 40 years of anniversary, I want to say thank you and I love you. Hello, I'm Nyla Locke. I've been a member of First Baptist for 32 years and I want to wish Mother Mary Jane Miller and Pastor Miller a happy anniversary. To Dr. James Miller and First Lady Mary Miller, we bring you greetings, Bishop Crenshaw and myself, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, wishing you a blessed and most wonderful, happy 40th year anniversary. We know as recorded in the scripture, the number 40 is so significant in many aspects. We know that the children of Israel was in the wilderness and wandered for 40 years. We know that Jesus was in the wilderness and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And it was 40 days from the time of the resurrection of Jesus to the ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This certainly signifies a journey of trials, yet ending in triumph. So may this journey, 40-year journey, be representative of the beginning of a new launching of many, many, many more years of ultimate victory. Many blessings, we love you, and it is an absolute honor to call your family. God bless you, and once again, happy 40th anniversary. My legacy is, is that I was honest to my craft, that I was faithful to God, God has been my leader and I have not swayed along the way. Probably the most, uh, the greatest pride that I have that, that the Lord allowed me when he could have used anybody to preach his word, to get his word out to thousands of people and to, uh, to draw them to Christ. That, that's, 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 that's the biggest right there, that, that I was able, a little boy like me from a little place called Marlowe, Alabama, just a dot on the map. If you didn't know where it was, you would never find it. But he allowed someone like me to come and teach his people and to end up in a place where I, where I am today. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Pastor Miller. How are you? Hope everything is going well. Happy anniversary, your 40th year pastoral anniversary. That speaks volumes and makes a great statement. Listen, enjoy your celebration. This is your friend, Paul Porter, and I wish you many, many more. I've enjoyed many times that I've come there to be at your service and praise the Lord. God bless you and your family and the church family at First Baptist. God bless you. Happy anniversary. This is Paul Porter, and that is my prayer. This is indeed an honor for me to having been asked to comment, if you would, just a little bit about my relationship with Dr. James Miller on his 40th pastoral anniversary at First Baptist Church of Warrington. First, let me say this. Pastor Miller is a great leader. He's a great man. 
He's a visionary. But more importantly, he's a great friend. Let me tell you about our relationship. I'm smiling because to the naked eye, when Pastor Miller and I get together, usually we have a lot of fun with each other. We entertain each other. However, you make no mistake about it. Our relationship is very real also. To me, he's my spiritual leader. He's a friend. He's also a personal counselor. And he is very, very down to earth. You may not like all the times the things the counseling and the messages that he's going to share with you, but I promise you he's going to be very, very frank as he has been with me down through the years. Listen, if you ever listen to this man preach, he can bring the house down. You make no mistake about it. If you hear him preach, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt the anointing that he has on him. Pastor Miller is a great community leader. When everything's are going wrong, at one time during this pandemic, he was the only minority church that was open and that extended his church to the community to have funerals. That says a lot about him and his relationship with the community. Pastor Miller, I know you're going to have a great time during your 40th anniversary. I look forward to being there with you. I know next year we'll even have an even better time when we all get together. Thank you so much for what you do for us. We can never repay you. Just God bless you. God keep you as our prayer as we celebrate your 40th pastoral anniversary, First Baptist Church of Warrington. Good afternoon, First Baptist of Warrington. Uh, I'm honored and delighted to bring greetings on behalf of Lady J and myself to our beloved friends, Dr. and Lady Miller. Dr. Miller, Lady Miller, let me commend the two of you for the stellar leadership that you have provided to First Baptist of Warrington for the past 40 years. But not only to First Baptist of, of Warrington, but to our community, to our state, and to our nation. And because of the two of you, our nation is, is better. And so I pray that the Lord will continue to bless the two of you as you continue to win souls for the master as you march up the King's Highway. Happy 40th year anniversary. God bless you. What's up, y'all? I just want to take time out to congratulate Brother Miller for 40 years of service at First Baptist Church in Warrington. Bringing the word. God is good. Brother Miller, just once again, congratulations. And I hope the full Sunday in February that you enjoy your day, you and your wife, Miss Miller. And once again, Congratulations on Deacon Ed and Snail. I'm sitting here enjoying your prayer. Let up, y'all.
Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. 